hundred years ago, on the 30th of November 1918, Micheline Kahn, the harpist, premiered Une Châtelaine en Sator for harp solo by Gabriel Fauré. She was also the work's dedicatee. Over the past century, Châtelaine, as we harpists call it, has become one of our most beloved and enduring pieces. But it's also something of an enigma, a bit like the work's dedicatee. Micheline Kahn was born in Paris on the 3rd of August 1889 as a member of an artistic, middle-class family, quite typical of the era. Her mother, Marie-Cécile Fauvel, was also a harpist who had studied with Hasselmans, so it's unsurprising that Micheline Kahn ended up as a pupil of his at the Paris Conservatoire. Early photographs show a round-faced girl with long dark tresses rather dwarfed by the harp in the picture. But she finished her student career quite brilliantly by winning a premier prix at the Paris Conservatoire Concours with Fauré's impromptu Opus 86, which had been written especially for the Concours. She was still a child at this time. This started a long and fruitful association with that composer, but things were pretty quiet until about 1913, when Micheline wrote to Fauré asking if she might arrange for publication some of his piano works for the harp. This she did with very accomplished arrangements of pieces from Pelleas and Melisande and the Dolly Suite. Fauré was very enthusiastic about this project, and he was very enthusiastic about Micheline's harp playing. With the advent of World War I, he began to arrange his own series of concerts for wounded servicemen, and Micheline was made an immediate feature of these. He often sent her little notes in verse, sometimes a bit flirty, advising her of the time and dates and locations of these engagements, as well as suggestions for repertoire, usually his own works. Things continued in this way throughout the war until 1918 when Micheline was invited to holiday with Fauré and his set at Saint Raphael. At about this time he presented her with the manuscript for the lovely Une Châtelaine en Sator, which he had dedicated to her. The piece is something of an elegy. An elegy for what? We're not really sure. It could be, rather as Vaughan Williams' Lark Ascending was to become later, an elegy for a country torn apart by war and the loss of the fin de siècle. Or it could be an elegy for Fauré, who was only to live another six years. But for me, it's more of a portrait of a young woman emergent in life. She's no longer that round-faced young girl. She's become rather a fragile and fascinating beauty and a great artist. <laughs> 